Bath, it's kind of your small town America. Most people here are generations. It's cool, you know, everybody kind of looks out for each other. You know, people want their community to be safe. They want their community to be a place to live. At first glance, Bath, Michigan looks like a place where nothing bad could happen. Nothing bad could happen. Friday marks 85 years since the horrific bombing of a school in Bath Township. Even after all the attacks at schools nationwide, including Columbine, Sandy Hook, the most deadly act of school violence in U.S. history happened right here in mid-Michigan. This plaque was put here in memory of those who perished in the Bath School disaster on May 18th, 1927. My name is Susan Hagerman. My parents were on the original committee of the Bath School Museum. Everybody on the committee is directly related to someone that was in the explosion. Andrew Kehoe was being charged more property taxes on his farm because he had the biggest one and he was unhappy about that. Farmers around here used dynamite to clear their property to plant crops, so he had the ability to purchase dynamite when he needed it. So he planted this dynamite in the basement of the school and uh, set a timer for 845 when all the kids would be in there. He had also killed his wife. He had planted dynamite in his home he had tied the feet of his horses together so they, they couldn't run away. And after the people heard the explosions at his house, they heard another explosion. And then somebody said, the school's been blown up. And so everybody went up there. It was heard for miles. It was heard all the way here into Lansing. You could hear children screaming inside. My father's memory of the explosion itself is everything was dark and silent. He, he didn't hear noise, he didn't see light. He did also witness the uh, classroom he was in. The far wall had fallen down into the classroom and he and all the children in class were spared because the teacher had had them gather up at the front for a story. Praise God because his life was spared because of that. It's made such strong people of the ones that lived through it. As they were digging through the rubble and everything, trying to pull bodies out, trying to pull students out, save people, they found an additional, what turned out to be 500 pounds of dynamite that had not gone off. Had the whole thing gone off, the whole township, and the whole bath town would have gone too. He chose to blow the school up because he thought if he killed all the kids, that's going to get people where, they, where it would hurt because they were all against him about this tax thing. You know, when you have a mass casualty event like that, it brings closeness together and it strengthens that community. And ours is still, I don't know a better way to put it, but living under that shadow and how the community had to come together to console each other and, you know, kind of bring a, a normalcy back to, to life. I think that that tight-knit bond has stuck in this community since then. The Bath School Museum, it's the history of the school. Pictures of the explosion, one of the old buses there. Things that were at the school at the time. Band uniform, this is the first one I wore. <laughs> It's a humbling place. It makes the events of that day and of the crime come alive. This is all about the explosion. Miss Weatherby, she's the one that was my dad's teacher. She was killed. They found her with a dead child in each one of her arms. This was the other teacher, Miss Hart. My mom was a teacher and I mean, she understood this story like a teacher would. When my mom died three years ago, you know, in Jewish tradition, it's you give money to, you, to a charity? And I said, my mother would love to give to the Bath School Museum. I was running the Chicago Half Marathon and I decided to turn into a fundraiser. It was like 1,050 we got. The museum is meaningful to me. Every year our museum committee sponsors a Golden Alumni Reunion, starting from the class of 1927. The actual luncheon itself is the Saturday closest to the commemoration of the bombing. The flag in front of the museum flies at half staff. 
which is powerful to see. Being in the middle school helps a lot because it's really visible to the community. Whenever they go to the auditorium from kindergarten on, they, they walk past this stuff. We're always trying to get younger people on our museum committee because those of us that are on it right now are retired. So we're really on the third generation, third and fourth generation, aren't we? Once we're gone, that's going to be it. And we just want to be sure that the information and all the artifacts are going to be well preserved. I think I'm the most disappointed one that, that they're not having it this year because I love going. But if I know the people there like I know them, they will definitely feel it the day anyway. It's in their DNA. There's something about community and gathering and that they can't do it, um, I suspect hurts. It's a deep emotional scar. I mean, people lost family they would never meet. A whole generation of children were wiped out. We actually have them do research on the bath bombing, but it's in the springtime. It's the last project they do. I wish they were talk face to face. There's just a different level of intimacy when you are looking at a person and talking to a person than doing it over the phone. This story is continuing and bath won't be forgotten. They, they do have to get more involved so that these stories don't die. That it's not just written word. They've, it's got to be the oral tradition of passing down those stories. I try to be positive about everything. We can't always control situations, but you just do what you can and you keep on. One of our committee members shared this just a few months ago. I didn't know it before then. It would have been the late 50s and the little penny girl was put in the school and the students used to walk by in the hallway between classes or before class and just kind of touch her and lay their hand on her and then they would know it's going to be okay today. They felt safe. Emery E. Hike, Superintendent. Blanche E. Hart, Teacher. Miss Hazel Weatherby, teacher. The children were Arnold V. Barley, Herman Bergen, Henry Bergen, Amelia Broman, Robert Broman, Floyd E. Burnett, Russell Chapman, Cleo Clayton, Robert Cochran, Ralph A. Cushman, Earl E. Ewing, Catherine O. Foote, Marjorie Fritz, Carlisle W. Geisenhaver, Beatrice Gibbs, George Hall, Willa M. Hall, Iola I. Hart, Percy E. Hart, Vivian O. Hart, Galen L. Hart, Lavere R. Hart, Stanley H. Hart, Francis O. Hopner, Cecil L. Hunter, Doris E. Johns, Thelma I. McDonald, Clarence W. McFerrin, J. Emerson Medkoff, Emma A. Nichols, Richard D. Richardson, Elsie M. Robb, Pauline M. Schertz, Elizabeth J. Witchell, Lucille J. Witchell, Harold L. Woodman, George O. Zimmerman, 
Lloyd Zimmerman, and there were two private citizens, Nelson McFerrin, Glenn O. Smith. 